Good morning and welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Wednesday, the ninth day of Tammuz. Let's begin with Tzedakah. The Daily Tzedakah, Shemekarevesa Tzedakah brings Mashiach closer, make sure to do it every single day. So today, we're going to learn chapter two in Egera Satshuva, the third part of the Tanya, the letter about repentance. And we learned yesterday the basic meaning of repentance. Repentance is about making a U-turn. Just turn around, saying to Hashem, I am not going to do this anymore. I want to do only what God wants to do. And al Rebbe clarified that fasting is not required as part of repentance. And although there are different categories of uh, different types of sins, what brings atonement along with the repentance? There's mitzvahs, positive mitzvahs, who you're being atoned right away. If it's a negative mitzvah, prohibition that a person violated, like eating not kosher, for example, then you have to wait for Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur brings the atonement along with the repentance. And then if the, when there is more severe sins that uh, involve capital punishment, death by heaven, which of course, as we mentioned today, that does not apply. And um, then what brings the atonement, what completes the atonement, you have uh, repentance and Yom Kippur, and then sufferings, and a person has certain sufferings that completes the cleansing, the atonement. But the suffering is something that God, what, whatever comes from Hashem, from God, it's not that a person should go and inflict himself. Then the Alter Rebbe explained that there was other reasons why people would fast. And he brought up a few examples, a few explanations, what we learned yesterday. Today, the Alter Rebbe continues the next step. And he says, what we said that the forgiveness, when a person re regrets his past and he decides to change, that the person is completely forgiven, absolutely forgiven. Nevertheless, when a person is forgiven, a person still needs to become beloved again. Just like when, you, when it happens with people. You, let's say you have a good friend, you become, you're very friendly with a person, very close, and then one day you messed up, you did something terrible to the person. And you come and you ask forgiveness, and he forgives you. But you can't see the, you can't look at him in the same way. Because you know you did something wrong, and even if though he forgave, and you know he forgave 100%, but it's not the same. You need to repair that relationship. And the way it's done, one of the ways it's done is when you send a, a gift, you give him a gift, send a, a nice gift, tell someone, in the Alter Rebbe brings the example, for a king, if you offended the king, and the king forgave you, you send a messenger to, to, with a nice gift to the king to become beloved again. So, the same thing, the Alter Rebbe says, in the time of the Beis Amigdash, the Holy Temple, when we brought offerings to Hashem, gifts to Hashem, so there was two types of offerings. There's an offering that a person brings a sin offering. When you did unintentionally committed a sin, you bring an offering to Hashem to, to, be, to, have, to be, bring forgiveness, atonement, along with Teshuvah, of course, with repentance. But then there is also the Ola offering. The Ola offering is something that is brought after you're being already forgiven. And that is an offering that is brought to the temple saying to Hashem, I want to be friends again. 
I want to be beloved again. And that is the offering of the Olam. That was in the time of the Holy Temple. And now that we don't have a Holy Temple, until the coming of Mashiach very soon, so the in, instead of the offering of the Ola offering of the animal offering, what the sages would do, they would fast. They would fast, and the fasting is like giving God part of my blood that is missing by not eating part of the fat that we lose. We're saying, may this be considered to you, God, as an offering. And for that, Al-Tarabah brings examples from different sages that they would fast many days for things that are not even considered terrible sins, very minor minor offenses that the people felt they did something which was not the way Hashem wants. And they would fast and fast again and again in order to become beloved by Hashem again. They wanted to give from themselves in order to become close and beloved to Hashem. And, and this is in the time after the destruction of the temple. However, we don't take this today. Later on, the Alter Rebbe is going to explain that today our job is not fasting. We're not strong enough, but that we'll, we'll learn later on. But uh, there's things we can do today as well. Later on, Alter Rebbe explains also we replace this with tzedakah, with giving charity. But also, what we give up from ourselves doesn't necessarily need to be giving up a meal. You can give up other pleasures. Um, you like to talk and, uh, and make yourself feel good by saying certain things and talk and enjoying yourself. And when we put some uh, restrictions on our the way we talk, how we talk, that itself also is a, a form of a sacrifice that doesn't doesn't affect our, our health in in a negative way. On the contrary, it can only help. So, let's see inside what the Alter Rebbe says. Says so the Alter Rebbe, chapter two in Eger Satshiva. However, all this refers to atonement and forgiveness of the sin. The offender is pardoned completely for having violated the command of the king once he had repented fully. So when, we're, when you repent, it is completely forgiven. Atonement and forgiveness thus do not require fasting if the individual repents fully. No charge nor semblance of an accusation is mentioned against him on the day of judgment so that he should be punished for his sin, God forbid, in the world to come. In his trial there, he is completely exonerated. When you do teshuva, you're completely exonerated, no punishment, no consequences. Because you did teshuva, you repented. And you repented sincerely. Meaning, as we said, you decided to be with God again, not to do anything which Hashem does not like. However, being forgiven and atoned doesn't mean that you again are beloved again. You need to become beloved. You need to do something else. Nonetheless, in order that he should be acceptable before God and beloved of him as before the sin 
so that his creator might derive delight from his service. In other words, you're coming, you're serving Hashem after you've committed a sin. And yes, he asked forgiveness. But now you're coming, serving the, the king. And you want the king to accept your service with love, just like before. That something else has to be done. It's not enough, the atonement. So in the past time, he would bring an Ola offering in addition to his repentance. And that was would be even for small mitzvahs, for small infractions. I feel all mitzvahs essay kalosha in because of Mrs. Besden, even for transgressing an ordinary, a light, positive commandment that involves no excision or execution. We're not talking about the severe uh, sins. In the spirit of our sages, in Torah Kohanim, they interpret the verse that says, it shall be acceptable for him. And the Ola offering causes a person who violated a positive command to become acceptable to God. And thus, we find in the Talmud, in the first chapter of Zevachim, the, the, the tractate Zevachim, over there it says, the oilo mechaperes al mitzvahs asei, v'yidoyrum le'ach shosa tshuva v'nim chaloi o'inish. It says that the Gemara, that the Ola offering atones for the violation of positive commandment. It is a gift that is offered after one has repented and been pardoned his punishment. So after the repentance was accepted, we still need to bring an offering. And that is the Ola offering. And as the example that we just mentioned before, when a person offended a king, this is like the case of a man who displeased his king, appeased him through intercessors. He got involved some people to get to talk to the king on, on his behalf and was forgiven by him. The king forgave him. Nevertheless, still, he will send a gift so that the king might consent that he appeared again before his sovereign. Because even after you're forgiven, and you want to come see the king, they'll say, no, thank you. I forgave you, but stay home. I don't want to see you. You want to be seen by the king again. You want to come and serve Hashem again. With that, you need to bring a gift so that the king, so you should, so you should become beloved again to the king. So the Ola offering was similarly brought as a gift to God after the offender has repented and had been granted a pardon in order that he once again find favor in the eyes in the king, the eyes of the king, and be beloved by him as before the sin. Now says the Alter Rebbe, in the parentheses, he says, which, which, so we just say, what is the Ola offering? It's not about uh, atoning, forgiveness. This is after it's already forgiven. So the Alter Rebbe is asking, we find the language, kapara lechaper olav, regarding the, mit, the Ola offering. Why does it say, why does it mention the atonement. We just said that this comes after you're already being atoned. So the Alter Rebbe explains that the word mechapes, which means aton atonement, has it's, it's more than just atonement. It has also the meaning of fixing and, and improving something. Like it says, v'chafat ha'isabakofer, you cover the the ark, the, 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 the Noah's ark, it says you should cover it 
also uses that word, meaning to add something to it. So it says, mechaperes, the expression atoned. Then this is the expression in the Talmud. Also in the verse, that it says it shall be acceptable for, for him to atone for him, although the Ola is not about atonement. This does not refer to the soul's atonement for the sin. For this is accomplished through repentance. Hello, what does it mean here, the concept of atonement? But rather, so to speak, his restoration before God so that he will bring his creator gratification. So no vestige of the sin will be remain and the former offender will be beloved of God as before. As the Talmud teaches there, that once the person has been pardoned, then comes the gift of the Ola offering, and as the verse states, it shall be perfect, so that it be acceptable. So that's the idea of bringing the gift to Hashem after the atonement. And the Rebbe goes on, that now that we do not have the holy temple, so this is why, this is one of the reasons why people would fast. And the fasting was considered instead of the Ola offering. Today, when we have no offerings to call forth God's pleasure, fasting replaces the offering. As the Talmud says, the prayer of one who is fasting, the Talmud says, what was the prayer? May my loss of fat and blood brought about through fasting be regarded as though I had offered, I have offered it to you as a sacrifice on the altar. So the purpose of fasting then is that one becomes acceptable to God just as before the sin, just like the Ola offering. And Alter Rebbe goes on to bring examples of the sages that when there was, it happened something very trivial that they sort of transgressed, did something very small, they would fast many days in order to become beloved again. It says, This is why there are many cases of Talmudic sages who for some trivial, trivial fault underwent a great many fasts. For example, so brings an example of Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah. Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, for example, he contended that a cow may go out wearing its straps between its horns on Shabbat. So we know the law is that on Shabbat you're not allowed to carry anything outside. Outside the private domain, you're not allowed to carry things outside. Not only you are not allowed to carry, but your animal also, you're instructed to make sure that your animal also does not carry things. And there was a question in the Mishnah whether a cow that has a, a strap between its horns is considered carrying or is considered part of a the jewelry or whatever, beautifying the cow. Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, his opinion was that it's okay. However, his, the sages disagreed. And we know 
that when there is uh, there is a uh, a dispute between the sages, you follow the majority. So he did follow the majority, and he wouldn't do it, even though his opinion was that it was okay. But nevertheless, one time, it says his neighbor went, his neighbor's cow walked outside on Shabbos with the strap between the horns, and Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah naturally Apparently, the neighbor thought, oh, this is the rabbi that said it's okay. She went out. Rabbi Eliezer didn't say anything. And then he realized that he made a big mistake. He should have told her that it's not allowed to do on Shabbos, even though his own opinion was that it's okay. it is allowed. But, it, but the ruling of the majority was that it's not allowed. He should have made sure that his neighbor doesn't do it. And because he didn't, he felt the need to fast. And the Mishnah says that he fasted so much that his teeth became blackened as a result of the fasting. That's what it says. Blessed ben Isaiah, for example, contended that a cow may go out wearing its straps between its horns and Shabbat while his colleagues prohibited it. And once a neighbor's Cow went out with its strap, and Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah did not protest. And because he did not support his colleagues, his colleagues' view, he fasted so long that his teeth were blackened. Then Dalton brings a second example of, our, of a sage who would fast in order to, he felt he needed to do this, even though it was a very small infraction, but he did fast. For example, so he brings the example of Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua ben Hananya, he was a sage in the, at the time of the Mishnah. And when he studied something from the house of Shammai, which was one of the sages, and he didn't understand, in his opinion, it didn't make sense. And he said, he made a statement, I am ashamed of your words, Bet Shammai. And then he came to realize that this was a big mistake of saying something like that about the great sage Shammai. And he also fasted in a, in a similar way in many fasts. That's what it says. So to Rabbi Yeshua once remarked, I am ashamed of your words, Bet Shammai. His teeth too turned black through fasting. And a third example, he brings of Rabbi Huna, that his strap of tefillin was turned over. Very small thing. But he fasted 40 days only for the fact that his strap of tefillin turned over. Likewise, Ravuna, because his tefillin strap once turned over, endured 40 days. Fast and indeed there are many such instances recorded about our sages. So these fasts were not endured for the sake of repentance, nor as self-inflicted suffering in order to complete the process of atonement. These were not sins of the kind that requires this. The sole purpose of, the, of these fasts were to restore the bonds of love between the former sinner and his maker. That was the fasting. Now the Rebbe goes on to say that the Ariza, Rabbi Yitzchak Luya, the famous Kabbalist, he taught his students based on the Kabbalistic teachings that in order to become beloved to Hashem, he said every type of sin, even smaller sins, has a number of fast days that a person needs to go through in order to become beloved again. So it says, well, you say it there on this basis that fasting substitutes for an offering and as such as a place even when an individual does not need to undergo suffering in order to attain complete atonement. So based on this, the Arizal, Rabbi Yitzchak Luya, 
taught his disciples according to the principles of the Kabbalah, the number of fasts for many transgressions. And we're talking about minor transgressions. Even though they entail neither excision nor death by divine agency, in which case sufferings would be necessary. And he brings example. Example for anger. When a person gets angry, says the Arizal, according to Kabbalah, becoming angry is something that requires in order to get Hashem's favor once again, one needs to fast 151 fast every time you become angry. So we better be careful not to become angry unless we want to lose a lot of weight. Vafilo al isu de rabban and sta kemoy stam yena misana and gimel tanius vechulu. Even for transgression as transgressing a rabbinic prohibition such as drinking the wine of an Anjou, seventy three fasts. Wine we have to be careful, you know. Even you have, even if you have kosher wine. Our sages tell us that there is wine that, that Nanju touches. We have to, we cannot drink it. And if it one did, says Darizal, we have to fast seventy-three fasts. <laughs> Likewise, for neglecting a positive rabbinic enactment such as prayer, meaning when a person prayed but he didn't pray in the time that the rabbis ordained. So again, to bring uh, the love again, becoming beloved to Hashem after doing so, says the Arizal, you have to have 61 fasts. As a general rule, says the Alter Rebbe, the mystery of fasting is wondrously effective for the revelation of the Supreme Will. When a person fasts, removes his material needs, con concentrating on the godly spiritual needs, that opens up a person to accepting, becoming the, the, the revelation of God's will. And again, it's not for today. Don't try it at home. Similar to an offering, which it is said, of which it is said, an aroma pleasing to God. Thus, in Isaiah, we find, do you call this a fast and day and a day desirable to God? So he was talking, the prophet Isaiah was talking about a fast that was not desirable. What do we learn from this? That in general, a fast is something that brings desire for Hashem. Obviously, an acceptable fast is a desirable day. This is the end of chapter 2. And again, now the Rebbe brings us to him. Deeper meaning that after atonement, one needs to become beloved again. And in those days, they would do it through fasting. Nevertheless, we will learn later. Today, we don't do it through fasting. We need to be healthy. We need to be positive. We need to be happy. And serving Hashem with happiness is very, very important. And repentance should also be done with happiness because Hashem gives us the opportunity to repent. And instead of fasting, we can give tzedakah and do other things. And may Hashem help that we should all do teshuva immediately and the coming of Mashiach will become, will come immediately. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow, Bezat Hashem.